Dios les bendiga, ¿cómo están? Vamos a darle un par de minutos para que los, los, los otros jóvenes empiecen a, a entrar. God bless you guys, how you doing? Welcome to class number four. We're going to give a couple of minutes just so the youth can uh, log in. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you. Glory to you, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to you, my God. We bless your holy name. Glory to you, my God. We bless you, Jesus. Glory, glory to you. How you doing? Those are that are coming in, God bless you. Today we're doing Bible study number four. Title is Sheep and Goatlands. Glory to you, God. Give a couple more minutes so the rest of the youth can log in. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We glorify your holy name, my God. Glory, glory, glory to you, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, my Lord. Glory, glory, glory to you, my Lord. Glory, glory to you. Give it one more minute and then we go. God bless those uh, connecting. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, my Lord. We glorify your holy name, my Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this day, my Lord, that you bless us, my God, with another day of life. Your mercy and your love. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, my God. Well, God bless you, youth. Today, Tuesday, February 2nd, we're doing study number four. The title is Sheep and Goatlands. Glory to you, my God. The scriptures today are found on John 10, 27 to 29, Psalms 23, 1 to 4, and Matthews 25, 31 to 33. Amen. Let's start off with a prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, for another day, Lord, which you allow us, Father, not just to get up today, Lord, but to, Lord, open up the word, Lord, and learn more about you, my God. Thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord, that even in the snow is out there, Lord, it allows us, Father, to spend a little time with our family, Lord, those that didn't get to go to work, my Lord. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they appreciate this day, Lord, with their families as well, my God. Father, I ask you, Lord, for this you, Father, that is watching, Lord, through Facebook, my God, that you, Lord, open up their minds, their hearts, their understanding, my Lord, so they can, Lord, learn a little bit more about you, Lord, and your word today, my Father. I ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Father, be the one speaking through me, my God. In Jesus' name, I ask you, Father, and I ask you, Lord, that, Lord, you're the one that knows, Father, everything that these youth, Lord, are thinking and what they're going through, my God. I ask you, Father, that your Holy Spirit speaks to their hearts, to their minds, Father, so they can, Father, learn to appreciate you a little more and get to, Lord, be involved in you, Lord, more as we're supposed to, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I ask you. Amen. Well, thank you, youth, today. For, we're doing study number four. It's called Sheep and Goatlands. Like I said, the Bible verses are Matthew 25, 31 to 33, John 10, 27, 28, and Psalms 23. Amen. So, like I said, today's title is Sheep and Goatlands. And we're going to read the word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither should any snatch them out of my hand. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Psalms 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I should not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul, and he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the glory and all the holy angels with him, when he will sit on the throne of his glory, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from his goats, and he will set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left hand. Glory to God. Today's main idea is humans being have the freedom to choose to depend on God or to live on their own ways and wait for the consequences. Today's goals are number one, to understand that being the Lord's sheep is a privilege, but it requires a commitment. To know that many claims to be the Lord's sheep, but they behave like goats. To recognize our human weakness and submit to Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And today, you know, it's a very interesting study, but I got a video that I would like to share with you out there. It's a short video, like 15 minutes, but I really, it kind of shows the difference between a sheep and a goat. And I really would, would like for you guys to pay attention to this video. So when I go into the class, you'll get to understand it a little bit more. Amen? So right now I'm gonna play the video. In Matthew chapter 25, Yeshua gives us a parable about sheep and goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the heavenly messengers with him. Then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In his parable, Yeshua says he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. We know that in this sense he's referring to separating righteous people from sinful people. But why did shepherds separate sheep from goats in the past and still do today? In other words, what else does this action of separating sheep from goats represent? The first thing we need to understand is that while sheep and goats are very similar, being classed in the same Caprini subfamily, they are also very different, and those differences are very important, and even prophetic. These differences can also help us to understand what spiritual characteristics we are supposed to have being servants of the Most High Yah, and it will also define the characteristics of those who rebel against the will and ways of Yah. So let's explore these spiritual differences and see what Yah is trying to tell us through the unique characteristics of sheep and goats. In Yeshua's time, and in the region where he lived, which is truly North Africa, despite what you read in geography books, shepherds often graze their sheep and goats in mixed flocks. Therefore, the sheep and goats in Asia and Africa are often similar in appearance. Those of us who are not shepherds will find it difficult to distinguish sheep from goats in those regions, but the shepherds who live and work there know the difference and can easily separate them. But in our Western culture, here in America, and even in Europe and other Western regions, it is not difficult to tell sheep from goats because they are often bred for their wool, including mohair and cashmere. This essentially makes sheep and goats in these Western regions look quite different from one another. So spiritually speaking, 
Appearance is not always going to allow you to tell the righteous from the unrighteous, just as it is sometimes difficult to distinguish physical sheep from goats, depending on the region of the world you're in. To our eyes, certain breeds of goats will look like sheep, and many sheep will look like goats. This will force us to use characteristics other than outward appearance to tell sheep and goats apart, both the spiritual and physical kind. One important additional characteristic to look for as far as differences in sheep and goats regards their behavior. Sheep tend to follow. Goats go their own way. Yeshua made this point very clear in John 10 verse 27 when he said his spiritual sheep follow him. But that verse also gives us a reason why they do follow. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. While goats tend to follow a head goat within the goat herd, sheep follow a trusted shepherd whose voice they know well. In fact, by voice alone, a shepherd can separate a flock of sheep and goats by calling out the sheep. With a herd of about 400 sheep and goats, watch the nomads of Kalop do just that, separating a large herd of sheep and goats in just minutes using only voice signals. By the way, Kalap is a village nestled high in the Himalayan mountains of India. In separating the sheep from the goats, note that the shepherds are using their voices, which the sheep and goats recognize. Mere grunts and other voice signals are effective in commanding the animals to move, just as Yeshua's voice is heard by his spiritual sheep and they move according to his word. But sheep generally do not listen to the voice of strangers. Let's see if a stranger's voice will get sheep to respond and move. Stranger number one only gets one sheep to look up, while the rest do not even notice him. Stranger number two also gets one sheep to look up. Thank <laughs> you. 
but stranger number three is completely ignored. <laughs> now, let's see how they respond to their shepherd, whose voice they know. Just as we are to do as Yeshua's spiritual sheep, these sheep all respond to the shepherd's voice and come to him when he calls. But they did not respond to any of the stranger's voices. Now, one of the main reasons why sheep and goats are to be separated relates to their diet. When sheep consume too much copper, it can kill them. They basically get all they need through grazing. On the other hand, goats do not get everything they need from browsing. Therefore, they require a mineral supplement that contains copper. So when sheep and goats are raised together, separate feeding locations will limit the risk of sheep receiving too much copper in their diet. Spiritually, this means that everything we need is the sheep of Yeshua is provided for us in a spiritual diet of daily worship and service to the Most High Yah and His Son. Reading our scriptures, praying, keeping the laws, doing good works and exercising faith, these ingredients are all we need in our daily diet with no need for supplements, such as outside additions like worldly distractions. Spiritual goats, on the other hand, have a limited diet of worldliness that does not supply all their needs. From this we see that there is a big difference in the way sheep and goats forage for food. We just mentioned the two ways they eat as well. Goats are natural browsers. Browsing in this sense means to feed on leaves, twigs, or other high-growing vegetation. Therefore, goats prefer to eat leaves, twigs, vines, and shrubs. Since they are very agile, often they will stand on their hind legs to reach certain vegetation. In other words, Goats like to eat the tops of plants. Sheep, however, are grazers. Grazing means to feed on growing grass. Therefore, sheep prefer to eat short, tender grasses and clover. They like to graze close to the soil surface. Similarly, one of the easiest ways to tell the difference between a sheep and a goat is to look at their tails. Usually, a goat's tail goes up, unless it is frightened, sick, or distressed. A sheep's tail will normally hang down. In other words, since goats prefer to eat high with their heads held that way, and sheep prefer to eat low with their heads lowered, this represents pride and humility, two contrasting traits that are present in the spiritual comparison between sheep and goats. This is also the reason why goats' tails point upward, representing pride, and sheep's tails point downward representing humility. This is not to say that goats and sheep are prideful and humble. We're just pointing out the representation in Yeshua's spiritual sheep and goats, the characteristics that will be present in those who are his followers and those who are not. Mark Silver of NPR conducted a 2014 interview with Kathy Dwyer, a professor at Scotland's Rural College. She does research on animal behavior and welfare. In that interview, she said, Because they browse, goats spend a lot of time investigating things. They are forever nibbling on and eating things. So they have more exploratory, investigative behavior because of their feeding style. They appear to be more interactive with the environment, and they are very engaging animals. Because of that, I can completely understand why people think they're more intelligent or have more personality than sheep. When you're a grazing animal, like sheep, you spend a lot of time with your head down eating grass. That's much less interesting to people. The spiritual meaning behind this is, goats like to explore, just like worldly people do. They are always interested in strange things. They can be lured by their senses, sight, taste, smell. Sheep, on the other hand, 
keep their eyes on the grass before them with their heads lowered. In other words, their eyes are always on the path in front of them, just as the righteous are commanded to do in the book of Proverbs. Let your eyes look directly ahead, and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet, and all your ways will be established. Interestingly enough, the next and final verse in that chapter commands us to do something very important. Verse 27 of Proverbs 4 says, Do not turn to the right or to the left. Turn your foot from evil. Unlike sheep, goats have a tendency of being able to go back to their feral or wild state when given the chance. And it has been discovered that the only domestic species of animal that will return to a wild state as rapidly as a goat is the domestic cat. So the trait of a spiritual goat is to turn their foot back to evil, in other words, to turn right or left and leave the path that Yah has set them on. This is something that spiritual sheep will never do. In closing, I hope that you will continue to explore these and other comparisons between sheep and goats on your own. But more importantly, I hope that you will strive to be a sheep in Yeshua's flock by living up to the characteristics they point to. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned a little bit more about the difference between a sheep and a goat, right? And I want you to keep these three goals in mind. To understand that being the Lord's sheep is a privilege, but it requires a commitment. To know that many claims to be the Lord's sheep, but they behave like goats. To recognize our human weakness and submit to Jesus, the good shepherd. Amen. So we're going to start this class, and as we get into it, the video start, is going to start making a lot more sense to you guys. Amen? Sheep are sociable, sensitive, and fragile, an emotional, complex animal. They establish intimate relationships with their youngs and other members of their species. They stay in groups to protect themselves from predators, just like humans. They experience fear when a stranger approaches or when they are separated from their families or social groups. Sheep are very short-sighted, so they seem clumsy and fearful. When they fall to the ground, it is difficult for them to get up. So the shepherd intervenes, taking the sheep in his hands and offering it with his voice, the confidence it needs to integrate into the fold. Sheep are almost totally dependent on someone to protect them. These deficiencies make them obedient animals, always attentive to the voice and direction of the shepherd, and not just any shepherd, but their shepherd. On the other hand, goatlings, who tend to physically resemble sheep, are smarter, more relentless, and more mischievous. They like to jump over the fence, they are ready to do damage, they like to fight, they are agile and independent and can perfectly survive in freedom. Adapting to the environment without the need for a herd, a shepherd. The point is that when Jesus comes, he will separate the sheep from the goats. Some will have eternal life and others will have eternal fire. Amen. Now, we start to understand a little bit better of the comparison that the Lord Jesus makes about goats and sheep. He wants us to be sheep, right? He wants us to be sheep in the sense as they are humble. As you've seen in the video, they always like to eat from the ground. Their eyes are always down. That's a sign of humbleness. And that's what the Lord wants from us. He wants each and every one of us to always be humble to Him. To always be looking for Him. To always depend on Him for everything. As you see, those sheep, they depend on their shepherd. And our shepherd is Jesus Christ. The one that we should always be leaning to and always waiting on him to take care of our problems, take care of our needs. As the word says, you know, that he will not leave us without giving us whatever we need. But all we have to do first is look for the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be followed. Amen. Human beings are often compared to sheep in the Bible. The Lord himself compared us with them. When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were helpless and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. 
Why this insistence comparison? Sheeps are fragile, fearful, and generally clumsy animals that need to be constantly guided and cared for. Most humans are like sheep, fearful, insecure, weak, and easy to stray, stumble, and fall. Not in vain does King David, the most powerful man in Israel, manifest his complete trust and the solicitude goodness of God to ensure him of everything necessary, both in the present and in the future, by confidently exclaiming, The Lord is my shepherd, and nothing to me will be missing. Unfortunately, there are many who believe that they can live independent of God as goats. Although very similar to sheep, goats live in an independent life without fear of God. And in that end, each one will receive his reward. You know, and the word tells us how when Jesus comes, he's going to put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. You know, we have to always... Being top of this, being Christian, you know, is 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 something that is not easy, especially with you youths. You know, you guys got a, a lot of battles not only in your head, not only in your body, but in the world, in the school, you know, and, and in church itself. But the word tells us to be firm in Christ, you know, to always depend on Him. What better than King David, right? When who was not only experienced both things, he experienced life as a shepherd. He understood what it was to be in the care, to have care for a sheep, but he also understood that that's how God always protected him, and that's how God always looked after him in that sense, right? The sheeps hear the voice of a shepherd. The sheeps, they need a shepherd. They have no natural defense. The vast majority of animals have some form of defense, but a sheep is one of the few animals that does not have any. It is totally vulnerable and is at the end of the food chain. And as we see, you know, this animal doesn't have very, very much skills to survive. It doesn't have big teeth where it can defend itself like other animals. It doesn't have big nails to scratch away, you know, predators or nothing like that. But it's just a form of how God wants us. God don't want us to fight our battles. God don't want us to go out there and be like goats, bumping heads with each other, looking into fights, looking, being very agile, like, you know, the study says. That's not up to us. We need to learn to leave all our worries, to leave all our problems in God's hands. And that's something that even us as adults, we have to to understand and learn to give that up to God every day. Leave it up in Jesus' hands. Amen? And number two, it is a defensive being. It has no claws, like I was saying, no teeth no to bite. Amen? And it does not need to defend itself. It has no fighting skills. And even though, you know, movies and everything like that that we see when we were in the world or, or wherever it might be, you know, that's not what God wants from us. That's why we need to stay away from those kind of violent behaviors and all that. You know, those are the behavior characteristics of a goat. Where That's not what God wants from us. He wants us to be sheep. He wants us to be humble. He wants us to always be attentive to his voice. Because how you want God to use you, how you want to hear God's voice, if you're not used to hearing that, because you're not submitting yourself to him. If there's one thing that intrigues me about Jesus and the 12 disciples is, yes, he picked 12. But I'm not telling you that God had favoritism or nothing. But God knows when you have that desire to get close to him. He knows when you have that desire that you want more of him. That's how come John, Peter, and James, he always took them to the next level of showing him took them to the mountain of transfiguration. He took them up to pray because they show that wanting more from him. And that's what God wants from each and every one of us. He wants us to show him that we want more of him. We are thirsty for him. We want him to feed us more. And that's what being a sheep is all about. It is a peaceful being. It can be easily tied up. It can be sheared and even sacrificed without putting up obstacles. It offers no resistance. It is a fragile animal. It looks so chubby, but when it 
it, when it is sheared, when the wool is removed, it is revealed to be thin, and all of its fragile shows. It is a moreover dependable animal, dependent animal. It does not stand on its own, and it totally depends on a shepherd, and not just any shepherd, but its shepherd. The sheep fragilely makes it obedient and attentive to the voice and direction of the shepherd. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they will follow me. As you've seen in that video, how uh, other people try to call those sheep, and it didn't catch the attention. But then the shepherd came, and they heard his voice. And what amazed me is how quickly they run right to him, you know, and they gather up because they learn to depend on that shepherd. And that's how we should depend on God. That's how we should depend on Jesus. That when we need something, we know that he's there. But we need to have that communication. We need to have that experience of looking for him, of being with him there so we can understand how he wants to use us. So we can understand the way that he talks to us. We have to have sensible ears. And the sheep, that's something that the video then showed, but they had very sensible ears. And that's another characteristic that we should have as lambs. Goatlings are self-sufficient. Goatlings seems to be smarter, more restless, and more curious. They are mischievous. They like to jump over fences. They are ready to do damage. They like to fight, to hit. They are very agile and independent. They can perfectly survive in freedom, adapting to the environment without the need for a herd or a shepherd. Don't that sound very familiar to a lot of people out in the world? You know, I'm pretty sure you guys as youth, you know, you guys have friends in school where you hear them do about all these kind of things. And that's, those are goats, you know. That's not what God wants us to do. That's not what he wants us to be. He wants us to be shepherds. Amen. A golem will eat anything. Peels, papers, old rag. He bites everything and eats garbage. He thinks that it is delicious. There are Christians who do not eat well. They do not read, study, or meditate on their Bible. Instead of participating in the church where there are healthy spiritual food, they eat anything. And I want to make a pause right there, right? Because that's another thing that the Lord said, you know, not only a food should the man eat, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, which is the Bible. You know, and that's another thing that's going to keep us humble. Is another thing that's going to keep us not acting and being in those characteristics of goats. You know, for us to be humble, we have to be in the Word of God. We got to be in prayer. We have to be able to, to withhold and withstand those times when they come. And they will come into our lives. But Jesus said, be still and know that He is God. Be still and know that he is there fighting for you, that he is there supplying all your needs, and he will be there for you. All you got to do is do your part, because that's what this is about. If you don't do your part, how you want God to be close to you, to protect you, to be there for you, even though his mercy is that big that he will do it, but one more of having that relationship with him, how much more safe and how much more secure will you feel in his arms just knowing that you have a relationship with the good shepherd amen a sheep knows where to feed the sheep prefers green pastures and calm water david like a sheep of the lord manifests his complete satisfaction in the goodness of the shepherds in psalms 23 he describes the abundance divine provision that includes things as varies as food, drinks, rest. In the place of delicate pastures, he will make me rest. Beside still waters, he will shepherd me. He also knew about direction. Comfort, it will comfort my soul and will guide me in the path of justice for his name's sake. Amen. He knew about safety, protection. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you will be there with me and what better way and what better way for us to feel that god is there with us if we just experience that at least once in our life i tell you that 
when you experience God's things in your life, I mean, you just want more and you want more and you want more. And it ain't easy. You know, we live in a world where every day we don't just get attacked on our on, on our cells but now you see as this world everything that's going out in this world in, in the world itself as far as covid and everything else that's happening you know it's just plans of the enemy to try to get us out of out of the way of god you know and, and it's not easy because you know it, we tend to lack sometimes we tend to lack from studying the bible we tend to lack from praying but that's not what the lord wants from us you know, we have to learn how to shake it off. If there's one thing I learned from, from King David, you know, when, when, when he sinned with Bathsheba and God, his son was sick and God took him away. I learned that he fasted. He threw himself to the ground. He was there pleading to God and asking for God for his son's life. But I also understood that he had to pay for a sin that he committed. And when God took his son I seen something in David that impacted my life and it's just that when his servant came and told him that he picked himself up he washed himself and he ate that tells me that when we fall because of our sin or because of anything in our lives we have to pick our own self up God's going to be there. He's going to help us. And he's going to be there with us because he is our shepherd and we are his sheep. But he will help you if you get yourself up. And we learned that from David. Amen. Another thing is the lifestyle that leaves an odor. Goldlings smell bad. Due to their restless and nervous lives, goldlings goats give off a bad smell you can smell a goat from many meters away the opposite of sheep who are amongst the cleanest animal ecclesiastes 7 1 says a give a good report is better than a good ointment that is a good report is like good ointment while a person with bad behavior earns a bad name and smells bad a young man who is with bad company, who frequently bars in obvious places, smells bad, as does one who likes alcohol, drunks, drugs, and smoking. A Christian calling, excuse me, a Christian calling that does not pay his debt. That is not good subject to authority. That is carrying gossip. It smells bad. So all those things that. The goats have as bad characteristics, you know, meaning that it smells bad. If we look at it in the spiritual sense, if we're doing things that doesn't greet the Lord, if we are not paying debts, if we are hanging with, with people that are doing worldly things, that kind of stench gets on us. You know, there's a saying in the world which says, tell me who you walk with and I tell you who you are. And it's a shame to say that it's true. If you walk with bad people, that's how you're going to be categorized as. You're not going to be, even though you, your parents are Christians and you go to church, but if you hang with the wrong group, that's what you're going to be known as. You're not going to be known as Christians, good Christians that are doing the work of God. If you're going with these people and you're hanging out with them. Amen. I know one of the biggest things that you guys got in school where, being Christian is hard. I understand that that way in school, especially because if you're Christian, you know I said this before. You consider you're not one of the cool kids. You're not one of uh, you can't hang out with certain crowds because you're a Christian and all this. It's okay. It's all right. Jesus was alone a lot of times, but you know what? He always depended on the Father to give him the strength, to give him the courage and everything he needed to get by life. And the Word tells me that he was tested in everything and nothing was found in him. So he does give us the strength and he does give us everything we need, you know, to, to, to be good sheep in this, in this world. So all we got to do is youth is always depend on the Lord. Always keep praying. Always keep reading the word because it's the two things that's going to keep your mind steady and hungry for him. You know, read Ecclesiastics is a very good um, 
book. Proverbs is also one of the, the best books for you guys that are youth. There's a lot of knowledge, a lot of word there that King Solomon, being young, you know, went through a lot of things. He was one of the wisest men in the world. But I always say just being that wise is, is one of the things that brought him down, you know, because God said he was going to make him the wisest man. But just because being so wise Sometimes it's not a good thing because then it opens up your mind to other things that is going to take you away from the stuff of the Lord. And that's not what God wants. He wants you to be obedient. He wants you to be dependent on Him. He wants you to always just keep Him first. Keep Him first and everything else will follow. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> we bless you, Lord. Glory to you. The faith of the sheep and sh goats at the Lord's return, the verdict of the sheep and the goats will be drastically different. The reason will be the way that they respond to the needs of others. The sheep took to the needs of others into the account and made an effort to satisfy them. While the goats did not, we will want to be accounted among the blessed sheep and not the cursed goats. We must acknowledge the need of others and work to meet them. We must strive to treat everyone as if we are serving Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And the book of Matthew, you know, if we read that the whole verse that's in the book and we go a little bit further, it starts off in 31. I want to read it for you guys because what separates and makes the difference of being a sheep and a goat it's at the remaining of, of the verse. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and, only, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep and from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you bless, you bless of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to see me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and took you in, or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, or surely I say to you, and as much as you did, it to one of the least of my bedrooms, you did it to me. Then when he will also say to those at the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not close me. Sick and in prison, and you will did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick, in, or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Absolutely, assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into the everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And that is one of the ways that the Lord show us if we actually goats or we are sheep. Are you doing God's will? Are you helping the poor? Are you helping the needy? Are you helping the sick? Are you doing God's will in this world? Because if you are, you're considered a sheep. 
But like the word shows us, those two will come to him that day and say, Lord, when we did, did we see you like this? Well, it's not just Jesus. We have to do it to each and every one that's out there. We have to be God's feet, God's hands, God's mouth, and God's ears, God's eyes in this world. And that's how you know if you are a sheep or if you are a goat. Are you turning away from when you see a need? Or are you helping that need? Are you turning away when you see someone in trouble? Or are you there like the Good Samaritan, there to help them pick them up and take them and help them until they recover? That's one of the things that God wants in each and every one of our lives is for us to follow in his footsteps. And what better teacher and what better person we have to follow than Jesus himself. He came to this world. He died for you and me. He not only came and died for our sins and for us, but he also came and left his footprints. He left a path for you and me to follow, for you and me to, to just follow his path and do what he did. And now he wants something greater from him. He wants us to do his work in this world. He gave us the great commission to go out there and preach to the world. And that's something that each and every one we have to do. It's not That's something that is a commandment he gave to each and every one of us. He didn't make exception and he said, oh, you go do it. No, he said, and Paul says it in his book, you know, when he's, uh, when he's talking to Timothy, he said, do the works of an evangelist, complete your ministry. That means we are all have, no matter what ministry you have, evangelist has to be right in there with your ministry. It's something that he tells us to do, and it's something that we must do. How else are we going to make the kingdom of heaven bigger if we're not out there preaching his word? So when you, next time you meet a friend or you, you, you hang in with a friend or something that doesn't serve the Lord, be an example to him. Help him out in his need. I tell you that there's no better blessing than for you to speak the word of God and for that person to to turn around and, and to accept Christ. You know, I had an experience uh, like over a month ago of, you know, when I had the word with my wife. And I remember a kid was here and he came up and he came up crying and crying. And I told him, uh, you want to accept the Lord? And he just looked up to me with those eyes, and he nodded, and he said yes. And I, I did the confession to him, you know. he I think he was maybe like 9, 10 years old. But that kind of thing will impact your life so much that to see that the word that God put in your heart touched a kid like that, enough for him to understand and wanting to accept Jesus, it, it was a blessing to my life, you know, and it's something that really marked me and it's something that I want you guys to experience one day. You know, don't be afraid to go out there and preach the word of God. Don't be afraid to be a lamb for God because he is the shepherd and he is the one that's going to be there protecting you and giving you everything you want. Amen. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the teaching today. And like I said, I know the video, it's, it's, it's going to be in your head, and I know it's going to help you guys, you know, uh, meditate on that and understand a little bit more. Amen. Well, I would like to um, go out with a prayer and take you, tell you guys thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being there. And believe me, we, everything we do, we do it for God, and He is the one that's going to bless you guys the best. I can't give you anything. <laughs> Amen. I'm just a vessel in his hands. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you today, Lord, for the, the lesson, Lord, that you allow me to bring, Father. And I want to thank you, Lord, for everything you do, Father. I ask you, Lord, in a special prayer, Lord, for this youth, Father, that's out there, Father, for the youth in this world, my God. I want you, Father, please, for your Holy Spirit, Father, to keep intervening for him, Father, to keep, Father, uh, talking to their minds, to their hearts, Father, that you they can understand, Lord, and have that impact with you one day, so they can have, Lord, that, that experience that's going to mark their life, Father, with you, Lord, that they will no longer be the same.
that there will be new creation in you, my God, that they can understand, Father, and they can feel what their parents feel, Lord, when they're in your presence. I ask you, Father, for each and every one of them, Lord, bless them, bless their homes, bless their parents, bless their, their, their ministries, Father, and above all, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, be the guide in their lives, my Father. I thank you for everything, my Lord. I ask you, Lord, for every family and this weather out there, Lord, that you continue, Father, to look after them as you have done till now, my Lord. And I give you, Lord, all the praise and all the glory, my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.